As the owner of an online tutoring business, one of my favorite things to teach is the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum. I've learned that both homeschool students and regular school students can use this curriculum to enhance all parts of their ELA skills, and that would be vocabulary, reading comprehension, writing, and more. So since I teach this, you may be wondering what results can your student get by going through these books? And moreover, what type of results can they possibly get if they're taught by someone like me. Well, I do have the advantage of having been a public school teacher who has also taught one year abroad in South Korea. And sure, parents can go through these books page by page and have their student walk through it page by page in order to learn it. Or older students can guide themselves through the book if they're diligent. But as someone who gets really excited about things like vocabulary and book recommendations, students get a treasure trove of value from the way I teach the MCT books. By the way, my name is Jessica and my online tutoring business called JPES Tutoring helps students ages 11 and up improve their skills and confidence in English language arts and math. I've been shocked at how well my students can retain all the stems and all the vocabulary from the books like the Caesars English books and the Magic Lens books. I think it's because I strive to make the lessons as interactive and as interesting as possible. For example, in the Level 3 Voyager books, I realized that the actual textbooks are broken down into multiple sections. There aren't many worksheet type of activities to do in the books other than word searches and like a few of those analogies. So when I teach students the new stems and vocabulary, I use a live Google Doc and encourage students to use the new vocabulary words to create sentences. While doing this, we take the time to discuss the meaning, the part of speech, and all the ways the vocabulary word can be used. I also keep students engaged by requiring them to type paragraphs and essays on a live shared doc. While students are typing on the live doc, I can make helpful notes in the margin and teach them really good habits such as rereading what they write or proofreading as they go. Each level of Michael Clay Thompson does have recommended novel reading, which is optional, but it does fit in nicely with the rest of the curriculum. So for instance, some of the vocabulary words used in the book are the ones being studied. At no extra cost to you, I always provide these books on screen. I do recommend that you guys obtain a copy of the books on your own, such as through your library or for like really cheap on Amazon, but I will always provide a copy of these books through my online Kindle. These book discussions are so helpful because it enables me to figure out how much of the story that the student actually understands. And this makes the reading process more of an experience and less of a task that they have to just check on a box. Even though these novels are great, I have actually taught students with the MCT curriculum and we've used outside novels, like not recommended from MCT, but books that I think my students will actually really enjoy more. So what results can I get for your student? With me, students learn a better appreciation of those classic novels and I've been able to invigorate students to read other books that maybe they were hesitant to read before. Check out this review from a parent if you want to see more of that type of thing. Students learn those grammar rules that a lot of schools tend to gloss over. My students definitely learn better writing skills such as proofreading their writing, rereading their writing, and thinking of better words like higher quality replacement for words. I always encourage students to think of a better adjective. I always use the example good. If the word is good, good is a bit of a boring word. The online thesaurus is a student's best friend because they can always go there very quickly and find all these other synonyms for the word good and then they can choose a word. Since I'm able to teach students the habits of finding better words, those habits can last a lifetime. I'm just able to show that to them. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might know that I'm a huge component of organizing work on Google Drive. So I always have every student use a Gmail account and create folders for our class. That way, when there's homework to give or when there's notes to add, that all goes into one place and they don't have to keep up with a messy binder. And the last thing that I always stress for students is to have good communication skills. I'm always emailing students 
and encouraging them to not be afraid to write back to adults, especially if they're new to emailing. Emailing isn't like as cool as social media, so a lot of kids think that if a teacher or some other authority figure, like some adult, some coach, some tutor, emails them, they think um. they just read it in their head and they don't know that they should respond, at least to say thank you. Gmail makes it easier than ever to send those quick responses, like those responses that say, sounds good, great, confirm, whatever that might be. I emphasize to students that they need to be considerate of their audience. They must think about what that other person is seeing because even as they're writing, they're writing to somebody. They're writing to hypothetical other students, they're writing to parents, they're writing to a specific audience, they're writing to persuade, they're writing to college entrance people, what is that? Admissions, they're running to a college admissions office and they need to be aware of their audience. So all of these are skills that I'm able to show students how to do. They just have to get to know me and work with me. So if you have worked with the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum before, which books are your favorite? I know a lot of parents who teach this curriculum have avoided things like the poetry book or like that four level practice. Some of the books honestly are sort of created for marketing purposes, you know. Each level does progress nicely, but I would say do not feel like you have to be married to any one level. So I've been teaching a student who has used a mixture of level two and level three books and she's actually able now to move on to the level five grammar book because I can see her strengths in grammar. So I told her dad, she doesn't really need to buy level four, we can move on to level five. If you have a fixed mindset of, I must complete all of level one, each book, and then all of level two, and then all of level three, you're spending a whole lot of money that you really don't need to. Now, I know that the books you choose to buy are your business, but whenever I'm helping parents and students decide what level am I, what book should I buy, I'm just frank with them. And the best way to know is for me to teach the student for a while, and then I'm able to actually tell them whether they need to mix and match certain levels, or if we need to stick with just one level. So don't be afraid to reach out to ask me questions or to ask for a free 30 minute consultation. I've had multiple parents reach out to me and it's so awesome because I've been able to get to know a lot of students and work with them. If you're interested in getting something like a free consultation or asking me about certain levels, feel free to reach out. Just remember that some of the best actions you can take right now for your child is to invest in their education. Good quality education doesn't just come by chance. So if you really want them to enhance their writing skills and to have a more meaningful, deeper knowledge of English language arts, please reach out to me. I do stay fairly booked up throughout the year, but I'm sometimes able to make room for new students. So please reach out. I'd love to help you guys. If you have used the Michael Clay Thompson books before, let me know which ones are your favorite and which ones are the ones that you've tended to skip over. I think the poetry book gets ignored sometimes and that one is actually great. Like. I realized that when you go through the poetry books, you grasp the English language a whole lot better than ever before. So who knew? I'll happily make another video to help explain some of this stuff because I do think it is overwhelming at first. And I know just the whole point is you want your student to have confidence and knowledge. Like that's one of the best things that they can have. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this type of content and I'll see you in the next video.